couple of them. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep the chili ones there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you sell them for me? Yeah, yeah. I like the bread. Um, we're standing on a very lovely place. This is the Wadi Mujib, or the River Arnon of the Bible. Now this was a real turning point for the children of Israel. This is the, one of the most remarkable watersheds in the wilderness wanderings because at this place, Israel began to take their inheritance. And so from this point onwards, Israel is taking land that's going to be theirs for them and their fa family for, for millennia to come. And so Arnon in the scriptures then sp speaks of the beginning of the taking of the kingdom. And uh, Israel was commanded in Numbers 21, that says in verse 15, uh, verse 14, Wherefore it is said in the books of the wars of Yahweh, what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and lieth upon the border of Moab. And so what we're seeing on the far side of the, of the brook here is the city Aria, which is Ar of Moab. Now they were commanded in Deuteronomy 2 verse 18 to pass by um, Ar of Moab and to, to come up into this part of the land. Now the children of Israel were to come up here and they first engage with, with the king of Heshbon at two places. One is Dibon, which we've just driven through, about a kilometre or two just behind us here. And the other one is Aroa, which is sitting on the cliff just to the uh, east of here, about sort of three or four kilometres up here to the east. And what we can see here is an amazing cliff face that, that would be presented to the children of Israel. There was no way that the children of Israel physically could scramble up these cliffs if there was an army sitting here on the top waiting for them. So it was remarkable. And so God intervened in the events of that day. So much so that it says what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon. And so we, we see the, the, the battle of uh, the, the conquering of Pharaoh in the Red Sea right throughout history, don't we? It's, it's, it's brought up time and time again. Remember how God brought you out of the land of Egypt. So we should also think of the Brook Arnon also in the same light, as he did in the Red Sea and in the Brooks of Arnon. And so it becomes a famous battle, and it's remembered for, for centuries later. Now, um, over in Psalm 136, this, this battle is remembered again. And it's the, to the two battles of both the Red Sea and the overcoming of Sion king of Hesh, Heshbon and Og king of Bashan are joined together again in this psalm. So in Psalm 136 it says, To him that divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endures forever. So God's mercy has an, an objective, it has an end for the Olam. So he has an objective in mind when he opens the Red Sea for Israel. And he made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy has intentions for the Olam. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him that led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. 
to him who smote great kings, for his mercy endures forever, and slew famous kings, Sion king of the Amorites, and Og king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever, and gave their land for an inheritance. And so these two events are closely aligned in both Numbers 21 and Psalm 136. So this place becomes the watershed for the children of Israel. Now how did they take it? Well it appears that they started their walk from the far end of the, of the Arnon because it talks about the, the, the beer or the headwaters of Arnon in Numbers chapter 21. And Numbers 21 is written not just as a historical event, as a historical story, but it's actually a parable. And it's written that way intentionally. And so what happens is that they went to Beer, verse 16. From thence they went to Beer. That is the well where Yahweh spake to Moses, Gather the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing you unto it. The princes digged the well, the nobles of the people digged it by the direction of the lawgiver with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matanah, and from Matanah to Nahalil, which is that wadi that we came back, um, wadi Walla, the wadi that we passed through before we got into Dibon. So what do you notice about those verses? It's full of references to water, isn't it? Notice that? Full of references to water. I will give them water. Israel sang, spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes dug a well, the nobles digged it, and the lawgiver with their staves. And the word staves there is actually the word pens. Now, if I got this pen and I said, well, I'm going to start digging a well with it, you'd say I'm crazy, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd say that I'm absolutely crazy. And so what we're finding here in this chapter is that that Moses is actually giving us a parable of overcoming. And you see, for us to overcome in life, we have to take the well of water that is impressed into material. And so the staves were the, were the, the impression the object that you'd actually write letters or make impressions into, a, into an object so you could pass a message to somebody else. And it's like the well of God, the, the, the Word of God coming in and making an impression on our heads. And when it does, it gives us victory in impossible odds. Now that's the, that's the parable of Numbers 21. Now it's placed in contrast to another type of water and that is the water of Moab and the water of the Amorites. Remember they come, Israel comes up now and, and they say to the Amorites look let us pass through your land and they said no we're, you're not allowed to go through but one of their requests was look we won't even take the water of your well and so if you want to take your inheritance, we can't afford to take the water of somebody else's well. And I think that those two things are put side by side in the record to show that the type of water that we need to make impression upon us doesn't need to be the water of the Amorites. The other thing that's very interesting in this, in this chapter is, the, is in verse 27 it says, Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs or parables say, Come into Heshbon, let the city of um, Sion be built and prepared. And so there is a clue in this chapter directly stating that this chapter is a parable. It's a parable of overcoming all the odds so that we can take our inheritance. And so God shows then that the water of life can overcome sin and give us inheritance. And that's the lesson that I think of, of Arnon. In one of the Psalms he says, Take away our sins like... The, um, like the, the, the rain that comes down the wadis of the south. And that's what God does. He does the remarkable things for us. And we can be very thankful that our God is involved in our lives. Now, over in uh, 2nd of Samuel tw chapter 24, when um, David went to number the, number the, uh, the, uh, the, the children of Israel in 2nd uh, of Samuel 24, the first place that Joab comes to to number the children of Israel is just here. And so in um, 2 Samuel 24 he says this, And they passed over Jordan and pitched in Aroah, which is just up here, on the right 
hand of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad, the river of Gad, and toward Jazer. And they came to Gilead and the land of, and so forth and so on. So this was the place which Joab came to first. He pitched at Aroah on the right hand of the city that was in the midst of the river of Gad. Why do you think he started here? Well, he was, he was a smart man. He was telling David, there was a message to David that if you really want your inheritance, God will not need numbers to overcome it. And all we need to do is look down at this cliff and see that God gave Israel a victory when they were walking in this direction is enough to tell us that we don't need a whole stack of numbers to help us to get into the kingdom. We only need God by our side. And so Aroa and Arnon and this part of the world is the beginning of the taking of our inheritance. This is Tel Dibon, the ancient biblical city, Dibon. Okay, we're standing on the, on the lip of uh, the Arn River, or Wadi Mujib, and behind us is the city of Aroa. Now, it was said of Siren, king of, of Heshbon, that he dwelt at Heshbon and ruled from Aroa. So Aroa must have been quite a significant city in the domain of uh, Siren, king of Heshbon. And you can see from the, the immediate fall off of the, of the territory here into the, into the Mujib, that, um, that this city would have been a very difficult city to take um, strategically. Because of its slopes, it would be very hard to, to press troops up against the wall. So this was a very strong city of, of um, Sion, King of Heshbon.
Okay, we're at uh, Ker Arasas, which is one of the eastern Roman fortresses. It bounds between, be behind us is all the desert lands heading right over to the eastern uh, deserts of Saudi Arabia. This was the line of fortresses that Hadrian set up around about AD 118 and formed the limits of the Roman lands for, for which he was prepared to protect and make into the Roman Empire. Where is Israel might have crossed or is it up as far as that? Yeah, no, below where it 